Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. So today I'm going to talk to you about the first five things that you need to do as soon as you get your violin. As soon as you've, you've the, the case has arrived from the postman or whatever and you've got it in your living room and you're ready to kind of rip the case open and get going. I'm going to be talking about the first five things that you need to do before you do anything else just to get yourself kind of off and going. So the first thing you want to do when you when you open up your case is tighten up the bow. So the bow will be quite loose, you just want to tighten up the bow. I've got a video on exactly how to tighten the bow and I will leave that directly underneath. So I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't want to make this video hugely long and kind of go off tangent and off topic. But the first thing you want to do is tighten the bow. If you want to know how to tighten the bow and how much to tighten the bow by, check that video and I'll have that linked underneath. Once you've tightened the bow, the next thing you want to do is put some rosin on the bow. So again, I've got another video on exactly how much rosin you need to put on the bow, but the bow will not work. It will not sound unless you put rosin on the bow. Nine times out of 10, you'll get rosin in the case anyway. So you won't have to go and uh, buy any extra rosin that will already come in the case, but you need to give it a good rosin. Sometimes those rosins that you get in the case, they are kind of a little bit cheap and cheerful. So you will have to give your bow a very, very good rosin. If you put your bow on the violin and you're not really getting much sound, and it doesn't really kind of sound nice and grippy and nice and full, go ahead and just add some more rosin. You could be adding what you think is quite a lot of rosin, but you've got to remember the difference between the kind of the, the, the cheaper rosin that you get with kind of the cheaper violins and the more expensive rosin like this. This is Sartori rosins, so this is my personal rosin, is that this will be a much higher quality. So I'll only do a couple of swipes to get my bow up and running and that's it. But if you've got a cheaper rosin, you'll be doing a lot more than that. And then the next thing you'll need to do is just tune your violin. Again, I've got another video on how to tune the violin. I'm not gonna go into detail because it makes it too long, but check out the video underneath on how to tune your violin. And you might want something like a little tuner like this that you put on the violin that, that will help you tune it. And again, the video goes into detail on how to use this. I would recommend something like this, uh, a tuner. I'll put a link to it underneath where you can buy it and what it is. But it's, it's ideal if you are someone who knows nothing about nothing. So if you don't know anything uh, really about music and you don't think you can kind of trust your ear to tune, then this is where you are going to need one of these. If you're someone that plays the piano or another instrument, especially an instrument that you tune up, you know, a woodwind instrument, another stringed instrument, something like that, then you'll be used to tuning. If you play the piano, you won't be used to tuning, but you'll be used to tuning and you can kind of, you know, have a go at doing that and you'll know what I mean. But you'll probably benefit from having something like this. This tells you whether you are perfectly in tune or whether your, your string is too high or too low. So after you've tightened the bow, rosin the bow and tuned the violin, the second thing you'll need to do is to learn how to hold the violin before you do anything else or any of those other things. So again, I will link the video that goes into more detail about how to hold the violin, but really you'll want to put the violin on your shoulder and then just underneath your chin. And the violin will want to sit out about between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. So think of your clock, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, you know, all that kind of thing. So for me, I know it's the opposite because you're, you're watching a video, but for me, nine o'clock is here. 12 o'clock is there. So we don't want to be holding it at 12 o'clock. We don't want to be holding it at nine o'clock. It's too far out and 12 is obviously too far forward. I feel like 11 o'clock is a little too kind of close to 12. 10 o'clock is more or less just right. Or maybe if you want to be pedantic, somewhere sort of between 10 and, and 11. Half past 10 <laughs> if you really like. But suffice to say, let's just say 10 o'clock is, is where you want to be, is where you want to be holding it. So that's where you want to be and you want to have the, the violin nice and straight. So you don't want this part of your arm touching your body. You want it nice and away from your body, not kind of close. If it's against your body, the violin is going to be dropping down here. I know you can't quite see me. I'm off camera, but my arm is now touching my body here. So that means that the violin is going to be dropping down. So we want a little bit of room between the arm and the body. 
Okay, so that's number two. The third thing you need to do is learn how to hold the bow. Again, I've got a detailed video that I will link underneath this on exactly how to hold the bow. But if I just show you how to do it in 10 seconds, just to give you an idea, but please do watch that video because it's gonna be in more detail. I should also add a caveat in there to say that there are many ways to hold a violin bow. If you've been taught differently or you've seen other videos, that's absolutely fine. Choose one that works for you and just stick with it. Sometimes it's easier if you are following my course, my 1 to 30 violin course and my videos, you know, and, and you like the way I teach and you, you just want to follow the way I do it, then it's probably easier to be perfectly honest just to do it the way I teach it because then you know everything is going to be consistent along the board. So I'm not saying I'm right and they're wrong and they're right and I'm wrong. It's just, it's, it's horses for courses. There are many ways to, to skin a cat. But you're going to put your thumb in the little gap of wood that you've you've got just just there. The thumb goes in, the two middle fingers go over, the index finger kind of slots in and the little finger should just be sitting there. So making sure your thumb is bent and your fingers are over like this. So this is a combination between the Franco-Belgian hold and the Russian. The Franco-Belgian is a little bit more upright i do believe the russian is a little bit more tilted so i'm kind of a hybrid between the two but like i say there are many ways to hold the bow this is just the way i do it but if you're following me then it might just give you a little bit more consistency okay so number four would be just how and kind of where to bow on the strings so um you'll be taught this in a course which i'm just going to go through it in point five but basically you want to be putting the bow somewhere between the fingerboard which is this black part here and then the bridge which is suspending and holding the strings let's just say you want to be in the middle and that's where you want to be bowing and when you're bowing you want to be keeping the bow nice and straight so you want to be keeping the bow nice and straight like this i know i'm not making any sound but it's just for the purpose of the video so we don't want to be bowing like that we want to be keeping the bow nice and straight. Like I say, I will link videos underneath um, in more detail, but this is how you wanna be bowing. And then the fifth thing, and the fifth and kind of final thing, is just to get yourself a course or enroll yourself into some kind of course or get some, some lessons. So what I would definitely advise you to do is whatever you do at the end of the day, don't just go randomly hunting for videos, trying to find how to play. So you're not really gonna get anywhere anywhere like that because you're, everything's just gonna be out of sync. Everything's gonna be learned in, in kind of, you know, in, in different orders. You're just not gonna learn that way. So I would suggest that you either find an online course. I've got one down here. I'll tell you about it in a second. You know, or in all seriousness, uh, an online course, find yourself a local teacher, um, find yourself someone that can teach you via Zoom. Uh, sometimes these music shops have teachers. Whatever it is that you want to do, I would I would totally recommend that you, you find a course. There's no other way to learn to play a violin. I've never known, I've never met anyone in 30, five, 36 years of, of doing what I'm doing that has taught themselves to play the violin by just bumbling around a few videos here and there and just doing whatever they, they please. It just doesn't work that way. Maybe possibly if someone is already a master of several instruments because you've already got a very, very high knowledge and, and background of, of music and playing, especially if you can play the piano to master level, that kind of thing. So maybe the exception of that, but even then you still need a methodology to follow. You can't just go, you know, picking up the violin and, and start playing. It, it just doesn't work that way. You're gonna have a lot of trouble. You're gonna wonder why everything sounds rubbish. Um, you're not gonna be able to do certain techniques because you're doing them all out of kilter and all out of order. You, there's just going to be so much wrong with it. So you're going to be, trust me, you're going to be wasting so much time and so much effort. So find yourself a teacher, find yourself an online course, find some books, whatever it is you do, find something. But I do have a solution to, <laughs> to that. I have a 1 to 30 violin course. I know most of you know, but those of you who don't, I've got a 1 to 30 violin course. I'll link to a video down below with, with more detail in. But in a nutshell, my course guarantees to take you from a complete 
beginner to a very decent accomplished intermediate player and that's absolutely guaranteed as long as you follow my course and follow all the lessons and follow as it should be and kind of not sort of really deviate from that it, it guarantees to, to do that. So it covers um, 30 lessons. The first 10 lessons are absolutely free for you to watch. So I'll tell you what, before you invest and go looking into a private teacher, which are quite expensive, why don't you just try my first 10 lessons for free? It doesn't cost you anything. All the resources are free. It's all completely free and unlocked. Try the first 10 lessons. If you don't like it, then fair enough. But if you do like it, then you might consider purchasing the rest of the course, but you'll get songbooks and tutorial books. And remember, everything is a culmination of my 20, 25 years odd of teaching private students and perfecting that and being an examiner, a candidate, a performer, um, you know, a, a a student myself so all of that is a culmination of that so it's all been very meticulously and very kind of well thought out over the years that I I've been teaching and you know with with my students being successful and everything so try the first 10 lessons if you don't like it fine if you do like it then you might consider purchasing the rest of the course but it guarantees to take you from a complete beginner to a very accomplished intermediate player and yeah and you can see for yourself so there we go that's just the first five things that you need to do when getting your new violin i hope that kind of helps you get off and going a little bit and helps you a little bit more so thank you very much for watching all the links to all the videos and my my book course and everything will be underneath this video and i'll see you in my next one bye